Confluence is a great tool for creating data heavy content. Often, when we have a lot of information on a page, we want to put it all into a nice big table or several tables. This can be really useful if you're maybe in a marketing team tracking campaigns in an overview table, or maybe you're part of a product team and you're breaking down your product roadmap into a table, or maybe you're in an HR team and you're managing employees' personal information or their contact information, something like that. Tables are great. But just because you can fill a table with information doesn't mean it's a great table to read through and find the content you need. Hi, I'm Matt with K15T, and I'm gonna take some time to show you how to make a really effective table by optimizing the content within the table and making sure that the right content stands out. The first thing to keep in mind is that people like to skim content to find the information they're looking for. So even if you have a huge introductory paragraph above your table, they might not actually read it. To provide the best context for people as they skim through your table, make sure that your columns and rows have really accurate headings. This will help them skim through the table cells to find the exact piece of information they're looking for quickly and easily. Although it may be tempting to make one big table with all the information in it, keep in mind that the more information you provide, the longer it will take your reader to skim through to find what they're actually looking for. The fewer columns and rows in your table means better readability for your readers, especially if they're on a small screen device. So here are some tips to keep your tables clean and organized. First of all, make sure that you're only including essential information in your table. It can be really easy to include lots of other things that might be handy, but often it's just duplicated information that doesn't need to be there. So make sure you're sticking to what people actually need. The next thing you can do is narrow down the amount of text in your cells by using emoji. Now, I'm not saying you should replace all your text with emoji, but if you have situations where you've written yes or no, you could replace those with emoji really simply to communicate the same message. Consider the direction of your table. Most people find that a vertically aligned table is easier to read than a horizontally aligned one. So I'm gonna update this to vertically align all the content based on the people in the table because they're the most important thing. Also, if it makes sense, split your larger tables into multiple small ones. It makes it easier to read the content on small screens and lets people pinpoint information easier because there's not such a large grid to have to look through. Once you've got the most important information nailed down in your table, a sprinkling of good visual formatting can improve the readability and the searchability of the content. To make sure tables are easy to scan through and nice to look at, make sure you only use a few simple but powerful rich content and macros. Like, make sure you use some simple text formatting where it makes sense. Or maybe add bulleted lists where you have multiple items in a cell or maybe apply some colors to make a bit of text stand out. Finally, you could use some different macros like the tip or the note macro to make important pieces of content stand out a bit more in the table. Keep in mind though, that using too much content like images or headings or too many confluence macros can make it really difficult for readers to scan through the information in the table because it'll just be too busy. Instead, try to lead readers' eyes to the important information by highlighting particular parts to help them navigate the table. You can use cell colors to distinguish between data sets and categories within your table. This can help readers focus more easily on the information they care about within the category they're really focused on. When they're used correctly, colors can direct attention, improve readability and comprehension, as well as promote association and recall of information. But keep in mind that some people with visual impairments won't be able to utilize them, so make sure that your table will work without that color. With the tables included in Confluence, you can do all the best practices that I just mentioned, but there are some apps on the Atlassian app marketplace that you can use to enable you to do even more with tables. And if you really like tables, you're probably like, tell me more. There are a lot of apps to consider, but Advanced Tables for Confluence by Bob Swift really caught our eye. So the app enhances Confluence tables with column totaling and averaging, numbering, sorting, CSS styling, but then it also comes with filtering and a search field so that users can search for a very specific entry they're looking for right within the table. So I hope you're ready to take that table full of content and optimize it so it's really, really useful for your team. 
At K15T, we've used these techniques for years to make some epic tables that really help everybody on the team figure out what we're doing and coordinate our efforts together. But that's just how we're using tables. How do you manage tables in Confluence and what are some of the best practices you've found for working with them? Let us know in the comments below. Also, there are so many other great things you can do in Confluence. And at K15T, we want to lay those all out on the table. So hit that subscribe button, share this video with someone else who's trying to make a great table, and join us for another video as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best.